Joanna Cannon and Anne Morgan are both first-time novelists. Joanna is a hospital psychiatrist in Derbyshire. Anne is a freelance journalist and writer in London who's already published one non-fiction book. Joanna's novel, The Trouble with Goats and Sheep, is set in the blisteringly hot summer of 1976 when ten-year-old Grace and her friend Tilly set out to discover why Mrs Creasy from Number 8 has gone missing. Anne's book, Beside Myself, is the story of what happens when six-year-old twins Helen and Eleanor decide one day to swap identities. Uh, Joanna Cannon, this book is set in the summer of 1976, famously a hot summer, a housing estate somewhere in the East Midlands, and one of the neighbours has gone missing, and Grace and her friend Tilly set off to find out what's happened. Just fill us in a little bit more on the circumstances. Um, OK, well, Grace and Tilly, as you say, live in a very ordinary estate where nothing really happens, but Mrs Creasy, one of the neighbours, disappears overnight. Nobody knows where she's gone. And all the very respectable neighbours who live around Grace start blaming each other for Mrs Creasy disappearing. And then they blame the heat for Mrs Creasy disappearing. Uh, but most of all, they blame Walter Bishop, who is the gentleman who lives at number 11. And the reason they blame him is because he's a little bit different from everybody else. And two things about this book. One is, it turns out everybody has secrets. They do. And the second is that we don't like outsiders. You coin a phrase. I'm not seen this term before you call them unbelongers That's what do you it. mean by that it's people who live in the periphery i think everybody knows somebody like walter bishop in the book somebody who is in the community but doesn't necessarily um find themselves included in things it could be because their hair's a little bit too long or their glasses are a little bit too thick or they keep themselves to themselves and their behavior isn't necessarily um normal in inverted commas so as a community people tend to reject them and they then live on the outside, and the only time they're noticed is when something goes wrong. Uh, Anne, Anne Morgan, uh, your book has a most intriguing premise. Two twins, identical twins, and one day one of them, Helen, the dominant one, decides that it would be fun to swap identities to wind up their mother. And Ellie, the less dominant one, decides she likes it like that, and she doesn't want to swap, to swap back, and it destroys Helen, doesn't it? Yes, that's right. Um, what starts off as a game, really, as a bit of mischief, um, a way of actually lightening a situation or a moment of discomfort becomes a serious problem for Helen. And um, what happens as time goes on, she tries repeatedly to reverse this swap, thinking that, of course, everyone will recognise who she is. She's Helen. We all have this thing inside us that is unique to us, and someone will see that in her. And yet, time and again, all the people around her with whom she's grown up um, fail to see what's happened or fail to accept it. And as time goes on, she becomes increasingly dismantled as a person uh, and pushed out, elbowed out of her life. So it's a book about identity and how far our identity and our sense of ourselves is dictated by others' preconceptions about us. Absolutely. How much are we inherently ourselves and how much are we what other people expect of us or reflect onto us? Now, your character, Helen, who everyone calls Ellie and who in the book as an adult you call Smudge, is living a tremendously chaotic life and at times she has bouts of mental illness. I think you've both read the other's book or at least a, 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 a reading. Um, Joanna, you are by profession a psychiatrist. I wondered how convincing you found the portrait of mental illness in Anne's book. It's incredibly convincing. I think when I first read about Smudge, when you see that first opening scene and the kind of environment that she lives in, I thought, this woman's got manic depression because you do tend as a psychiatrist to diagnose fictional characters quite easily. Um, and immediately I thought this, this woman is clearly very, very unwell. And I thought it was beautifully and very sensitively portrayed. Now, th this is a first novel for both of you. Joanna, you started by writing a blog, I think. I did, yes. And so how much of the book is drawn on the disguised but real-life accounts of real people in that, in that blog? Um, the people in the blog are all fictitious. Um, when I started medicine, I. I had to go through a lot of different departments before I did psychiatry. And I saw a lot of very distressing things. 
that even in my 30s I found very difficult to deal with. And I used to get very upset about it. And I thought, I've either got to lose that sensitivity or I've got to process it. So I started writing my blog. And from that developed the story of uh, Tilly and Grace. Anne, you, um, you've had a more conventional route. You read English at university. You then went and did a creative writing course at University of East Anglia. You are a, a, a journalist and a writer by profession. But you started off writing non-fiction. Um, a Year of Reading the World is your previous book, in which you tried to read a book from all 196 countries in the world in the space of a year, which is quite a challenge. Um, why fiction? I found that the um, many very different, often challenging and quite um, extraordinary stories that I came across during that project remade me as a writer, uh, made me much more creative, much more um, fearless, I think, and, and not afraid to tackle topics and things that perhaps previously I would have been intimidated to try. Um, and so actually that non-fiction project, I think, prepared the ground for me to try again at novels. Now, these two books have some superficial things in, in common. Both of them are told, at least for part of the time, from the point of view of a child. Both of them alternate chapters in The Now, which in your case, Joanna, is 1976, in your case is sort of contemporary Britain, with chapters looking back onto the, into the past and gradually unravelling a mystery. Now, uh, earlier this month, I interviewed another first novelist whose book doesn't have chapters narrated by a child, but it does have this structure of alternating chapters in the now and in the past. And I wonder, all three of you have been on creative writing courses. You were, you've been on a course run by Faber. You did two years at the University of East Anglia. Is this the sort of thing they teach you on creative writing courses, Joanna, first? This is a conspiracy theory, isn't it? <laughs> um, no, they didn't teach us that. Um, and I originally wanted to tell the whole story in 1976, but it became clear as I was writing it that we needed to revisit the past and these characters needed to tell their own stories. And there was simply too much backstory. It's too much backstory and I think you have to be very mindful when you're writing not to dump information on the reader through another character or through conversation. So I decided quite early on we really had to go back a few years and see what actually happened on the avenue. And, and Anne, how useful, how constructive is that kind of creative writing course did you find? I, I found it useful in terms of having a year to focus on my writing and to treat it as a vocation in a way. Um, writing is an odd thing because um, you do it on your own in your room. Unlike many of the other arts where you have to collaborate with people, it's quite solitary and telling people that you want to be a writer can feel a bit like coming out almost because um, it's a bit embarrassing, you know, no one really knows about this about you. And so actually going somewhere where you can share that ambition and spend time devoted to it and you're sort of justified in prioritising it is a valuable thing. In terms of being taught techniques, we didn't really have that much of that. It was more a, a place to explore the story that you wanted to tell and, and how you might do that. Anne Morgan, Joanna Cannon, thank you both very much indeed. And that is the last of these Meet the Author interviews that I'll be doing. After six years, many wonderful books and fascinating conversations with writers, I think it's probably time to quit while I'm still ahead. But Meet the Author will be continuing under new management. In a few weeks' time, Jim Nochte from Radio 4 will be taking over in this chair. In the meantime, if you have been, thank you for watching.